Hello, everyone, and welcome to Advanced Apple Music, a series where I'm going to be going step by step through my system for getting the most out of your Apple Music subscription. I've been obsessed with collecting and listening to music since 2003, and over almost 20 years, I've consistently been working on improving my experience to better track new music that I love and surface music in my library that I haven't listened to in a while. For those of you that aren't on Apple Music, uh, don't be afraid to switch over and give it a shot. I've jumped around services until settling here in the summer of 2020. There's a lot of really good online services that range from free to a couple bucks that can help move your library and playlists over. And it's pretty accurate um, and takes very little time. So um, definitely a lot of resources to help you um, try out different services and find one that works for you. I actually started with RDO all the way back in early 2013. Then I moved over to Spotify in 2014. I had dozens and dozens of handmade playlists on Spotify before trying Apple Music for the first time in about 2016 uh, because I was intrigued by combining my library and iTunes with a streaming service. A couple little things that I didn't like too much at the time, so I actually went back to Spotify about six months later. And then about two years ago in 2020, I decided to give Apple Music another shot because I just bought a HomePod and love the sound and experience. This time it's stuck and it's largely due to Marvis Pro, which is a companion app that I'll spend a lot of this series focused on. Uh, but for today, I'm just going to focus on Apple Music on your Mac or PC, and I'm going to show you how I have a few background things set up. If you don't have a Mac or a PC, these aren't entirely necessary to get your library together the way I have and get the, the full experience, uh, but it definitely makes it a lot easier. So let's start with some basics on what features the desktop app has that makes my life a lot easier, uh, particularly ones that I can't do on my phone in some other way. The first is going to be able being able to edit metadata. Uh, so I'm starting here in my recently added songs playlist. Um, and keep in mind that a lot of what's going to follow is vastly improved by having genres that mean something to you. It's important to remember that there's no exact right genre for a song. Uh, but when you're creating automatically updated playlists that may pull based off of genres, you're just going to want those results to make sense and be grouped in an appropriate combination. Apple or uh, maybe the labels actually do a really subpar job on genres. They label a lot of things like a generic rock or pop. Um, so being able to go in and edit those has been really important for me in my overall setup. And I've got tasks set up about once a week where I'll go into my recently added songs and um, change the genres around, maybe clean up any metadata, adjust the album names to remove um, deluxe or things like that. Sometimes I leave it, um, but I'll go in once a week and essentially just clean up my library. So let's move over to Smart Playlists. Now these used to be the complete backbone of my entire listening experience with Apple Music. Uh, particularly before 2013 when I switched over to streaming services, this was this was all I had. And they still do provide a foundation for quite a bit of my new music discovery. Just operates a little bit more in the background thanks to some of the features in that Marvis Pro app that I've mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So to show you how to get a smart playlist set up, I'll actually make one from scratch here. Now let's say that I'm waxing nostalgic from my high school days and I want to make a playlist that is a mix of punk and hard rock songs that I've added to my library before 2008. I need to stress that 2008 has nothing to do with my high school. It actually just happens that I had to do a complete wipe of my iTunes library at that point. So there's no dates added earlier than 2008, um, which makes things a little bit tougher, but um, that's neither here nor there. So um, in addition to needing songs before 2008 of those genres, let's say I only want to add songs that I actually like as well. So my entire library is... Um, rated and any song that I like of, to any degree is also hearted in here. So I'll need to set up a filter for that as well. Anyway, to set up a new smart playlist, what you're going to do is head up to the, the file menu up here. You're going to click on new and you're going to click on smart playlist. And this is going to jump right into the rules here. Um, before you can even click on or change the name, you're going to start making some rules here. This is a good place to really start to become familiar with how the logic works uh, for smart playlists. And this will also translate over to the Marvis Pro app as well. So you're going to be creating a set of rules to filter down your library to only songs that match what you want to show up. So if we're looking for songs before 2008, the first thing I'm going to do is change this rule right here. Uh, I don't want it to filter by artist. I want it to filter by date added. Now, before I select a date added, you can see on here, there is just a ton of different options here. So really with smart playlists, and a lot of these are reflected over in Marvis Pro on iOS or iPad OS as well, but you have a lot of control over what can show up in these play playlists, and it really helps out a lot with 
making things easier down the line or um, being able to listen to specific uh, slices of your library. So we'll go ahead and click on date added. And we're going to do is before. And I think that that crash happened sometime during the summer. So I'm just going to do uh, 9 1 2008. All right. So if I click OK, this is going to bring up the smart playlist. I'll just call this um, high school. This brings up the playlist. And so this shows what my library essentially was before that crash happened. So we got 7,400 songs. That's more than I would like. And it definitely has a lot of different genres in here. We've got ACDC. That wasn't a big high school band of mine. Um, the Afghan wigs, things like that. I was really into punk rock and hard rock in high school. So I'm going to go ahead and click on edit rules. And we're going to add some more rules to filter this down a little bit. So I'll click this plus on the side here, and the next rule that I want to take care of is to make sure that it only includes songs that I like. So I do have a number of songs in my library that I keep just more for reference purposes. Those are these two-star rated songs that aren't loved. Um, you can see that I have a lot of ACDC just in case for some reason somebody wants to put on ACDC. Uh, but there's only a couple songs that I actually want to show up in my smart playlists. But I'm going to go down here, click on love. Love is loved. So you could do it. Um, love is disliked if you want to keep certain songs out of here for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, or you could make a playlist that shows what songs you haven't loved. So loved is neither. And that'll show you if you need to um, identify any songs as being songs that you like. If I click OK on that, whew, now we've filtered about half. Um, I, before 2008, I kept a lot of just reference music, um, not necessarily stuff I listen to on a regular basis, but we're getting closer. We're down to 3,600 songs here. Now, it looks like the last thing we need to do is just zero in on the punk and hard rock songs. So this is where it gets a little tricky for the first time you do this, because at the top here, you can see that I have a check to match all the following rules. And I do want all of these followed. If you change this to any, then it's going to do an either or situation here. And it's going to bring up almost all of my library. It's going to bring up anything that was added before 2008 and anything that's loved. So I'm going to get everything after 2008 that's loved and anything before 2008, not helpful. So I want to keep this as all. But what I'm going to do is um, click on this over here. And if you hold down, I think it's the option key. And I'm not sure what key it is on Windows, but one of the keys to the left of the space bar right here, um, it'll turn these into three dots. And that'll let you set up a little group of rules. And you can change this group from all to any. Now, the reason I want to do this is because I want to have either of these two genres come through. So either the genre contains punk or the genre is hard rock. And then another little trick here is that you can use contains if there's a couple genres that have the same word in them that you want to pull up without doing a rule for each one. So for me, I have punk or pop punk, and I want both of those to show up. Um, however, for hard rock, I just I only want hard rock. I don't want rock itself to show up or anything like that. Alrighty, so now you can see that it's going to pull in anything before 2008 and is loved and has to be one of these two genres by adding this third rule group here. So if you click OK, now you can see that we're down to 882 songs. And because it's not a perfect reflection of my high school time, um, there may be some songs that I found in college, but by and large, this definitely reflects a lot of what I was listening to in high school. So there we go. We've used smart playlists to make a little snippet of some of the music that I was listening to quite a bit by filtering down and using different rules. So let's take a look at some of the playlists that I have set up. First off, some of the list one, I have a few that mix different genres together. I don't use these on their own too often. I used to quite a bit, but they provide a quick way to leverage the Marvis Pro app to do some interesting things. So I'll just go over kind of how I have some basic genre playlists set up. Um, this first one is going to combine a number of different genres that I think of when I hear alternative. So this is kind of how I make almost like an alt nation, you know, Sirius XM station right here. 
Um, so very similar to the last one, except I don't have any filters for years. So rating is greater than two stars. I could easily change that to love status uh, versus the, the stars. Um, so this could be loved is love. And then I have the same setup. So I have any of the following are true. And then I have a number of different genres that I'd like to hear when I'm thinking of listening to kind of like a, an alternative radio station. I've got similar ones set up for uh, blues and garage rock. So I label all my garage rock type stuff as indie rock versus just indie music. And then I pull it in with blues rock and that gets more of that kind of raw sound um, if I want to hear that. Take a look at a couple more here. Uh, classic rock. I have one station that pulls in oldies, classic rock, and 60s rock. And I actually, I used to use this one right here to... Um, to really make it for more fresh music that I hadn't listened to in a while, but I don't need that anymore. This is more of just like a collection of all of my classic rock songs. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to adjust those rules. I'm gonna subtract both of those and just keep it as just anything that's greater than two stars. And then all of those genres are true. So I've got that. And then the last one we'll show here is just, um, this is my heavier music. So I can use this either when I want to listen to some heavier music, or I can use this to filter out heavier songs from some of my other listening habits, uh, whether I'm in the car with somebody who may not be in the same mindset as me, um, when I've got contains hardcore, metal, hard rock, screw, those are things that I don't generally want to show up if I have family over or things like that. Um, but that's the, uh, that's that genre. So genres are one way to use smart playlists. Um, but I also use them extensively for collecting and listening to new music set up to hold all music that hasn't been rated or loved yet. Now, I typically go through and rate and listen to everything on Tuesdays and today is a Wednesday. So right now there isn't anything actually in this playlist, but I can still use it to show you of how I have that set up to be able to track uh, what music I need to listen to. So I've got a Found Sounds future right here. <laughs> it's got kind of a funny picture. That's a buddy of mine um, looking like he's trying something. I'm uh, not particularly too big of a fan of it, but um, so this playlist, the rules are really simple. Um, the rating is nothing, love is nothing, and media kind is music. I used to, I think this playlist is almost a decade old, so I think back in the day it was important to put music type as music or um, for some reason some stuff wouldn't show up. Um, so when I'm listening to music or if let's say that somebody uh, sends something to me, uh, or a new album comes out, there's a really good app for tracking new albums that are coming out called Music Harbor, and I'll throw a link to that down in the, in the bottom as well. Um, what I do is I just simply add it to my library. It'll get added to my library with no rating or no love status whatsoever. And then uh, when I am feeling like I want to listen to new music and just really kind of absorb whether I like an album or not, I'll go to this playlist and I will um, play out the album um, album by album and add anything I like to my library and then delete anything that I don't. Um, I have a scale. So I use ratings pretty extensively and I would recommend that if you have the time to get that set up to do that. I think I, you know, I have over 10,000 songs when I first started doing this and I, I went through and probably rated about a hundred songs a day. Um, and I was familiar with most of the songs. So I would just kind of click through the song, get a feel for it and then give it a gut rating of, um, one of these star ratings. My scale for ratings is like this. So one star is typically uh, not a rating that I'm going to use. I'm going to delete anything that shows up as one star. So I may use that if I have a whole bunch of songs that I want to delete for some reason and I'm not in iTunes and it's kind of a pain to do it on iOS. I'll use one star to do that. It doesn't get used very often. Two stars is going to be filler. So I'll keep those songs if most of an album is good, but if half or less of the album is good, then I'll generally delete any filler songs. Uh, so if I have an album of 12 songs, and let's say seven of them are, are good songs that I like, I may keep the other five songs just to have a full album on there. Um, I can kind of punch through some of those two star songs if there's enough good songs around them to make it worth it. But let's say if a 12 star, a 12 album, 12 song album had five songs I like, I'll generally delete the other seven songs rather than rate them two stars. Three is good enough to be in my smart playlists and played regularly on uh, some of my radio station setups that I have. Four is going to be one of the best songs of the year. It's really good, and I can probably listen to it without getting sick of it at least you know over the course of that year. And then five is going to be best all time. That's going to be a favorite forever. I'll, I could listen to it a billion times and never get sick of it. Anyway, once I rate the songs, then they disappear off this playlist, uh, which you can see happened yesterday. 
So all the songs that are rated three stars or higher are actually going to end up in two places. Uh, the first one is going to be a last month rolling playlist. So I've got a found sounds last month playlist and you can see it's, I've been finding so much new music with my new system. So I've got 175 songs in here. Um, and you can see that it actually, I have it sorted by play count. So some of these songs down on the bottom are songs that have been on here most likely for a while. If I add the date added on here, you can see that, yeah, that most of these are from earlier in January. Um, and then as we get lower and lower play counts, these are going to be later in January, typically not always. And that's because of how I have my system set up on iOS. I have it to play, um, songs from this playlist over the course of the month and then they drop off as the month goes by. If you click on edit rules, whoa, there's a lot of stuff here. So again, MediaConda's music may not be necessary anymore. I just leave it there because why not? Um, I'm going to skip these comments once for now, but I have date added in the last 30 days and then any of the following are true. So rating is greater than two stars or because it's that any right here, love is loved. And the reason I have it set up that way is that on iOS, um, especially with Marvis, it's way easier to love a song than it is to rate a song. So a lot of times if I'm not trying to rate it four or five stars, I will just love it. And then I have a smart playlist set up in iTunes to come in that is all my songs that are loved but not rated. I'll just select them all and rate them all three stars. But until I do that, which is usually about once a week, this playlist will pull in anything that's either loved or rated three or higher. So that helps out a lot with just making that uh, a lot faster. And then I've got two comments in here. So sometimes I'll add songs to my library or purchase songs that are from you know before 2022 or before the last month. Um, and I don't want them to show up over and over again for a month when I've already had them in my library for anywhere from a year to you know over a decade. So I've got these um, filters set up. So you can use comments to do different things with your playlist. And I will put in a comment into songs that I'm adding that have already been in my library for some reason um, to keep them from showing up on here. So comments does not contain no last month. I'll add the comment no last month into the song and then it won't show up in this playlist. And that helps me just keep this playlist truly a reflection of what the last 30 days has, um, has meant for me. The other place that these songs are going to go into is uh, a yearly playlist. So I do keep track of a lot of my songs by year, and I have a smart playlist set up to capture everything that I've found this year. This is what it looks like right here. So date added is in the range, and you can do a future date so that you don't have to keep add, updating this playlist. So I've got 1-1-2022 one, one, all the way through the end of the year, and songs will just keep getting added to this playlist as time goes on. Comments does not contain, I use pre-2022 if I add any songs to my library that I've already had before so that they won't show up in here. And then again, that any of the following is true, love is loved, and rating is greater than two stars. Uh, if it's a really good song and I rate it four or higher, I'm gonna, it's going to automatically show up in this playlist. It's the exact same thing. It just has three stars as the greater than instead of two stars. You see I'm a little picky with songs getting added to here as I only have 20 songs versus 175 songs. Sometimes I think I'm a little bit too picky, but you know it is what it is. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to make a couple rolling playlists. So I use these. I don't actually listen to these, but they're very helpful in Marvis Pro for uh, making what's essentially a radio station. So I can pull in songs that maybe I haven't listened to very often over the last year, but that I do like and want to get those surfaced a little bit better. Um, so those two yearly playlists we just listened to, I have a rolling version instead of just a static version. Um, so we'll start with a one year, just non four star songs this actually includes everything three or up so you can see there's a lot of four star at the top here maybe it's sorted by rating somehow because they're all four star okay down here you see a lot of the three stars so the rules on this are going to be pretty similar just a little bit different um, so the biggest difference here is that instead of the static date range you can use a relative range so date added is in the last 12 months instead of um, is in a set range. So this is really helpful for me to uh, have my iOS device pull in songs that maybe I've only listened to a few, few times. Maybe they just didn't for whatever reason show up in the random shuffling before. And it will uh, pull those in and I can play them alongside some of the more recent stuff, um, making it almost like a radio station that's, that's surfacing up some, some older music, but not that old. 
And I have the four star songs set up in pretty much the same way. It's just, again, three stars, greater than three stars instead of two stars. So some of these are immediately useful. Um, I used to use the last month love playlist for the majority of my music listening. And I used the, the genres quite a bit when I was in a certain mood for things. But that said, since I found this out that I've been harping about quite a bit here, Marvis Pro, I use these mostly almost like a backend database for more interesting setups. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be covering in my next videos. So stay tuned and appreciate your time. Um, hope you find the same amount of joy from your music library as I've been able to find.